guys. Welcome back. Uh, this is Kim in California and welcome back to my garage and just total craziness and chaos. Um, I've been trying to uh, get a few things done here this morning and it's just uh, it's a total mess and excuse my mess and uh, excuse my notes that I'm going to have to refer back to because I'm having a little hard time this morning with getting this uh, getting this video out and uh, it's a brain fog what I think up here isn't coming out the mouth so just bear with me uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today and this is probably more for newer gardeners and for people who have been gardening a long time who already know these little oh dif different tricks and things like that for starting seeds and seed germination in particular so when I started to grow my seeds and I was growing growing them in here in my greenhouse, uh, they were coming up okay, but they weren't coming up in the time that I thought they should or that was stated on the back of the seed packet. So I was wondering what I was doing wrong and uh, then realized that my soil in my little seed cells wasn't warm enough. And I did end up buying a little seed mat, a little warmer mat, and let me bring you over and show you. So just bear with me with the light here. What I have is a seed starter mat, seedling heat mat, and this is supposed to heat your soil up 10 to 20 degrees higher than what it is in your room because if your room is 65 degrees, your soil in your little containers isn't 65 degrees. Uh, you know, don't be misled by that. Soil is going to be probably 55 degrees if your room is 65. And the soil temperature is also going to fluctuate depending on how much moisture you have in each of your little seed cells. So if you're using a heating mat, make sure that you take the temperature of the soil often and you, you check your moisture level often because the heating mat will dry out the soil faster than if you didn't have anything under there at all. Now the other thing with using like a little heating mat of some kind is what you have the seed mat on. Now if you have... I'm trying to move this out of the way. If you have some kind of shelving like this, this mesh shelving, you're going to be losing a lot of your warmth from your seed mat down through the bottom, down through these, down through this mesh. So make sure you put something underneath your heat mat if you have this kind of shelving. Put at least one or two layers of cardboard underneath the seed mat, and that way most of your warmth will come up to where you want it to be, and that's in your little seed starter container. So I started trying to think of cheaper ways to warm the soil so that my seeds would start germinating. So what I came up with was I went to Home Depot and I bought a six foot rope light and it's the incandescent one, the one that puts out warmth or puts out heat and came home, put it under my seed starter tray and I just set it in the clear part of the tray now I'm going to have to change that because I am losing heat out at the bottom of this also. Now I could just leave it in this clear plastic and I could put a piece of cardboard underneath here, which I may do, but uh, it's not sitting on that light the way I really want it to, so I'll be changing that. But even the way it is, after three hours, I took the temperature of the soil in these little seed starter cells and it was 75 degrees. So that's a good temperature to start uh, many of your vegetable seeds. And all you have to do is look online and uh, go to a search engine for whatever seed that you're starting, whether it's a vegetable seed or flowers or something like that. And just type in, you know, let's take tomato for instance. Type in tomato uh, seed temperature germination and you'll, it'll come up with various sites of what the optimum temperature is to start tomato seeds. Now, what I like to do after I take the temperature of the soil is write it on a little uh, seed marker and then just take a piece of tape and tape it to the front. That way I know that the, all the soil in this box or in this container is 75 degrees. And if, uh, uh, if my squash, if the optimum temperature for my squash to start is 75 degrees, then I need to start it in this little container. So let me show you of another way I came up with that is just as cheap as the rope light and uh, I'll be able to use this a long time. I went to the store yesterday and got a couple of these under the bed storage containers and they're about four, 
four to five inches deep. So I got two of these and they were right around four dollars a piece. So that's eight dollars, about the same amount as the rope light. But uh, I did put some Christmas tree lights in it. And I put two strands of Christmas tree lights and they were mine so they were free. And put the top on with the plants in with some soil. I just wanted to mainly check to see how much the Christmas tree lights were going to heat up my soil. So after about three hours, I took the temperature of the soil and it was 105. So I quickly took my plants out, took one of the strands of lights out and uh, started over again, waited about maybe two hours and took the temperature again and it was still up in the low 90s. So I did take uh, just a small piece of cardboard, put it over the Christmas tree lights that were left and started over again to see what the temperature would come down to and it came down to 85 degrees. So I wrote that on a little marker, put that on the front. So now anything that needs to be started around 85 to 90 degrees can go in this container. And that would be like my peppers, tomatoes, I believe uh, watermelon, maybe even eggplant. But like I said, if you look online, you will be able to find uh, quite a few different charts that you can print out with the different temperatures that your seeds will start at. So that was my third way of warming up the soil temperature so that my seeds will germinate at the rate that it says on the back of the package or even sooner because tomatoes they say start between uh, maybe 80 to 85 degrees but the optimum temperature for them to come up is 90 degrees. Like I said, take the temperature of your beds often because the soil temperature is going to fluctuate with the amount of water or moisture in the cells. Now I've noticed since I've had these uh, higher temperatures, higher than my heat mat, say 85 degrees, the moisture is really evaporating at a pretty good rate. So I'm, I'm even just dumping water into the container and letting the water be absorbed from the bottom of the seed cells. So there are a couple other ways to get your seeds to germinate either on time or at a faster rate, uh, especially seeds that won't germinate for say uh, oh months or maybe even years and uh, that would be scarification and stratification. Now that doesn't usually happen with a lot of your vegetable seeds although you can scarify a vegetable seed and it will come up faster but usually you don't need to. Uh, ones I'm thinking about are uh, like flowers like morning glories or like this little canna seed that I have here it's just a little it looks like a little black pea, but the outside is so hard that no matter how long I soak this, it's going to take a really, really long time for this to absorb any moisture or any water. So what you have to do is scarify it, and all that is is just taking it, and fortunately this is big enough that it can fit in oh, a little pair of pliers, and uh, I just scar the seed, and all that means is I need to scratch it on something abrasive. And this is a little piece of abrasive sandpaper. And I just need to take some of the outside of the seed coat off to get down to where it's white. And these canna seeds are really hard. Now, usually to uh, multiply cannas, you just dig them up and you take the rhizomes and break them apart and then you know move them around wherever you want them. But you can start them from seed. Now, what I had to do with these was I had to take almost the entire outside of the coating off before it would absorb any moisture. But I finally got the outside off and I was able to soak three or four seeds and uh, after taking the outside off, it absorbed the water and within four to five days, I had a cannon coming up. And if I had just stuck that seed outside in the ground, I wouldn't have had cannas for a really, really long time. So there time. are some vegetable seeds that you can scarify if you want to, but you don't really have to. If you have the right soil temperature, uh, they're no doubt going to come up on time, especially if they have the right moisture also. But you can take, uh, say, green beans. You can scarify them a little and soak them in water for maybe a day or two. And I wouldn't go any longer because you can over soak something in water and then it just ruins the seed. Now, stratification is something different. It's more like going along with nature. So it would be taking your seeds and either putting them in some kind of uh, like a little Ziploc bag 
putting them in your refrigerator to simulate them going through a winter phase where they're really cold. And it depends on what seed you're growing, but you might leave it in there anywhere from like two days to two weeks, maybe even two months, take it back out and then put it in the soil and start germinating it. And that just has the seed go through a winter phase and you're just kind of faking the seed out, <laughs> basically. So going back to seed germination, I think one of the most important things you can do is get the soil temperature at the correct temperature it should be for your seeds. Uh, don't try starting your tomato seeds in 60 degree soil because they're not going to come up for a really long time and you may think that something's wrong with your seeds. Make sure that they're at the temperature, the optimum temperature that they need to germinate. Well, those are three of the ways that you can increase your seed germination rate. And I would think of all of them, uh, increasing the soil temperature would be one of the most important ways. Uh, look up your seed or your seeds that you're going to want to start and come up with a plan of warming up the soil and then plant your seeds in that temperature of soil that they need uh, to germinate. And, you know, you can fudge with these in a lot of different ways. Like I said, uh, this particular box is running right around 75, but if I put some insulation under it, it's going to bring the temperature up. So make sure you get a thermometer, either a kitchen thermometer, a garden thermometer. Get at least one or two, and if they're cheap, like I think this was about two dollars, two nineteen, something like that. Get a couple of them just in case it's not working. That way you know what the temperature of your soil is and you don't have to uh, be running around looking for a thermometer somewhere. And by all means don't go in your bathroom and get your thermometer and stick in the soil because your soil may be contaminated. So other than these cheaper ways of uh, getting your soil temperature warmed up uh, your seeds, of course, are going to need light. I'm not going to talk about lighting today because there are so many other videos put out on lighting and they're so much better than anything I could do. You know, watch one of those videos. You know, go to YouTube and uh, type in indoor plant lighting. And believe me, there are many out there. And uh, go with something that those people are uh, discussing. That's all I have for you guys today. And I'm going to go and... Uh, kick back and I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for coming by today and if you have any comments uh, or questions or you feel that I've left something out, please uh, put it below and uh, if nothing else, just put a little hi so that I know that you guys are watching and I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.